Our top stories tonight. Legendary Kwaito musician Mendoza has passed away while receiving treatment for cancer. The Young Communist League says the SACP must contest the 2019 elections on its own. This is E-News Direct Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Melanie Rice. And I'm Benito Vegettini. You can comment on any of our stories by following us on Facebook and Twitter at E-News Direct. Or you can check out our content on our website, enca.com slash direct. Legendary Kwaito musician Mendoza has passed away. The Nkalakata hitmaker had been receiving treatment for cancer. 38-year-old Umduduzi Shabalala had been diagnosed with a type of throat cancer which had spread. The musician's last public performance was at the controversial Thank You SABC concert last weekend. His family released a statement confirming his illness last week. Well, we cross live to our reporter, Nontobeko Sabisi, who is near Mendoza's home in Pumbol, Soweto. Nonto, a devastating day for Mendoza's family and friends. Certainly a devastating one, Melanie, and a very somber one here in Soweto, Pimville. And we had made our way earlier outside Mendoza's family home where we saw musicians, family members, and a few fans coming in to pour their tributes and actually send their condolences. Many saying that they have lost a pillar within the music industry, a man who gave us hit tracks such as Ngalagata, a man who made great contributions within the Guaito industry and went on to win many and many awards. Now, if, um, you will recall that he lost his battle to cancer. We are told that he was taken into hospital earlier today, this Sunday morning, only passing at midday today. Now, the family is yet to release an official statement. What we understand is that they will be meeting just after 8 o'clock, and they're hoping that they'll be able to have a press conference tomorrow officially talking about what has taken place here in Pimville, Soweto. Those close to him saying that he was brave despite the challenges he faced. Oh, certainly. If you recall back in 2015 in May, that was the first, the first time word got out that Mendoza had diagnosed, had been diagnosed with cancer. And for that time, the family member had played it off, just saying to the public that it's just a sinus issue. But having gone up and down in hospital, he was officially cleared of cancer. Until just a couple of weeks ago, when we saw the producer of Mendoza, Gabby LaRue, posting a statement saying that um, the musician is sick and is in hospital. I spoke personally to Umpom Shabbat just also a couple of weeks ago where she clarified to say that Mendoza was not as sick as he were, we were led to believe but also at the same time he was taking some treatment but also waiting for treatment that will be coming from overseas abroad you will remember that his cancer resurfaced um, at the back of uh, at the front by his eyes as a sort of brain tumor and that's what he was going to receiving treatment for which was said to come this Wednesday but unfortunately he didn't even make it to this Wednesday to get his uh, medication that was going to be coming overseas. Hence, he passed away at midday today. Nontobeko Sabisi there reporting near Mendoza's Pimville home in Soweto. The South African Communist Party must contest the 2019 election on its own. That's the demand from the SACP's youth wing following a meeting of the league's executive this weekend. Now or never. The voters in South Africa are beginning to shift away on voting on political affiliations. They vote on the basis of who is going to deliver on their needs. Leaders of the Young Communist League say while their ANC members in good standing, they're deeply concerned about the party's leadership. They're adamant the SACP must fight the 2019 election alone if there's any chance of uplifting South Africa's poor and working class. At the time is now that we've reached a stage in the National Democratic Revolution where we think that the vanguard party of the working class, which represents the poor working class, which is, by the way, the majority, coming to the question of what are our chances, uh, that it's about time that the SACP now lead. This is not a new call, though. The SACP resolved in 2015 to explore the possibility of contesting elections while still fighting the ANC for more decision-making powers within the tripartite alliance. As the young communists, we don't think that there is a will on to resolve challenges facing the African National Congress. Therefore, 
with that denialism and no will, all what they are focused on is on liquidate, liquidating the, a, the ANC. The ANC did not respond to calls for comment on the Young Communists' call. The potential for the SACP to succeed in the 2019 elections will depend on how seriously it takes its youth wing's call. And how quickly, if at all, Communist Party structures confirm this as a resolution in order to start campaigning for votes as soon as possible. Nikolaus Bauer, Johannesburg. South Africa's water woes continue with restrictions imposed on the Orange River for the first time in 24 years. Farmers and domestic users will have limited access to water with restrictions higher in Mangaung and the broader Eastern Free State. Even access to water from the Caledon River has been outlawed. The Caledon River flows through many Free State towns, but according to the new restrictions, no one is allowed to come anywhere near its waters. For the last few years, central South Africa has been plagued by drought, hence the water access limits. And for the locals and farmers, the restrictions don't come as a shock. They have been experiencing difficulties for the past three years, and during a visit to some of the farms where we expected there to be over-irrigation or unlawful irrigation, we found that most of the farmers are not irrigating at this stage. And the assumption that we made it was because there is no water in the resources, that some of the farm dams are dry, some of your smaller rivers are dry. In the last few years, farmers have had to learn to adjust to the limited availability of water. And predictions show that drought conditions are not likely to ease. It might seem like business as usual for Bismarck Fick as he prepares to attend a cattle auction. But he's only making ends meet because of pre-planning and adapting to the situation. It's not effect, uh, affecting us at the moment. We already adapt by the drought and we knew the water restriction were coming so we did make plans to adapt to the restriction. Fuck has abandoned any planting where he'll need to rely on anything more than rainwater. In order to keep his livestock alive he has to buy extra feed at great cost and pump water from a small dam on his farm. But he keeps an eye on the water levels dreading the day the water runs dry. In surrounding towns, people have been making do with two hours of water supply daily, on good days. It was dramatic. I was actually not sure how to do plan and make it, so I was definitely not sure how to These folks have also realized that if they don't fend for themselves and their neighbors, it won't ever be a case of business as usual for the foreseeable future. Jana Roos, Klokkelaan. Parliament's labour woes aren't going away. Earlier this week, trade union Nahawu ended its strike over pay scale grievances, but now it's turned to the CCMA for help. Facing chaos in the National Assembly last year, Parliament hired more security and protection staff. But the old hands are now at odds with the newcomers over pay and working hours. The longer serving officers claim they're being short changed. You remember that last year in July, Parliament um, employed more officers, chamber assistant, uh, that are usually seen when there is a disruption in the house. And those employees, you know, were paid or are being paid at a higher salary scale than the, you know, the, the senior or the former employees that have been there. And now we're saying, in fact, there is no difference in terms of the work that they're doing. And in terms of the provisions of the Labor Relations Act, they must be paid uh, equal salary because they're doing the same job. The How claims there's a salary gap of around 150,000 annually between the two groups. Only Parliament can explain because as far as we know, there is no need for disparities. Uh, because they employed certain employees mm. and they paid them at a higher salary scale. Nihau is also questioning the way the new chamber assistants were hired and believes it has a strong case to present to the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration, the CCMA. It's asking Parliament not to delay the process. Parliament objects every time so that they delay, they buy time, will go for conciliation and will wait for another month for arbitration. But it's fine. We are willing to wait for as long as we get the positive outcome. Nihau says it will face to exhaust all legal processes before again resorting to a strike. 
For now, it's waiting for a date for the showdown at the CCMA, Sikele Romding, Johannesburg. Well, for these stories and more, go to enca.com slash direct, or you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at E! News Direct. Benito's up next with... A team of builders in France has given themselves an age-old challenge. They're going back in time to construct a castle the medieval way. Shedding light on the mysteries of medieval constructions. These builders are relying solely on the 13th century techniques and tools. In addition to being a huge tourist attraction, hundreds of students, castle enthusiasts and even novices come to the site each year to work on the project. One of them is Nick Platt. I don't like using electric uh, tools, uh, except perhaps drills. So when I came here, I, I found the, the use of hand tools was natural but the saws that we use are very very different and um, were initially quite cumbersome to use. The architectural experiment not only aims to find solutions to unanswered questions about medieval construction, it's also expected to provide lessons for sustainable building in the modern world. And on that note, Candace has your three-day weather forecast. It's been a bitterly cold, cloudy and wet day over the eastern part of South Africa on Sunday with highs in the teens and a few maximum temperatures even remaining in the single digits. We've also had reports of snowfall in Harry Smith as well as the Lesotho mountaintops. Much of that rainfall clears out on Monday but we're still expecting some rainfall over parts of Kuzid and Natal and Pumalanga and Limpopo. With cloud remaining in the forecast over the northeastern parts, we'll see a massive recovery in those temperatures across South Africa with fine and dry weather for most of the country and we're expecting a particularly warm day over the western and southern parts. Highs head into the upper teens and low 20s for Kuzir and Natal, with a chance of rain for Lundi and Richards Bay, with most of that rainfall occurring in the morning. A mild day is in store along the eastern Cape coastline, with maximums in the low 20s, 24 from Mtata through to Grahamstown. We stick with that highs, we head towards George and Cape Town, with high cloud throughout the western Cape, and a warm forecast over the interior, with maximums in the upper 20s, just shy of 30 for Uppington, but highs stay in the low 20s over the southern part of the province. 22 for Bloemfontein and for Ree Smith with some morning cloud expected for the Free State. Partly cloudy and warm for the Northwest. Sunny and warm for Freiburg at 27. Lots of cloud remains over Limpopo with some morning drizzle for Zanin at 21 degrees. We're also forecasting some drizzle for Bombela at 21. Still quite cool for the high felt of highs in the middle and upper teens. A vast recovery in those highs for Kharting on Monday, 24 Johannesburg and Soweto. Pretoria 22 degrees with partly cloudy weather and most of that cloud occurring in the first part of the day. Temperatures continue to increase across South Africa on Tuesday with a thick band of high cloud in the west. We'll also see high cloud on Wednesday and that's, that extends through to the central parts with a hot day expected over South Africa's interior. That's all from the Weather Saint for now. Have a great week. Here's a recap of tonight's top stories. Legendary Kwaito musician Mendoza has passed away while receiving treatment for cancer. The Young Communist League says the SACP must contest the 2019 elections on its own. And that's a wrap from the E! News Direct team. Up next on ETV is Modern Family. To share your views, you can send an email to enewsdirect at etv.co.za. Or you can chat to us on Twitter and Facebook at enewsdirect. Until next time, it's good night.